Hello everyone, welcome back to another Batman Miniature Game Battle Report 2nd Edition. Uh, we're going to be doing 350 rep of Bane against the Militia, which I think is a matchup we haven't done on the channel yet. On a new board featuring a lot more dense terrain than the last setup we were using, along with some new bits of scenery that we'd love to take credit for, but can't because they're from eBay, but still. So a lot more dense. It's going to change the way the battle hopefully flows. We'll go over the cruise and then we'll roll for scenario. So not with the greatest of lighting, but here's the 350 rep of the Militia, led by the Arkham Knight, backed up by Deathstroke, and then from the Militia Bat Box, a Cybernetic Brute, the, the Militia member with the, the uh, Carbine Rifle, and the Lieutenant with his Electrical Billy Club. Their objectives that they're going to be taking for the mission are Riddles, Medical, and a Titan Container. And in terms of extra gear taken with spare funding, uh, the Arkham Knight has taken a hidden magazine for plus one ammo, cybernetic arms, which I think give him reinforced gloves rule, a hook pistol, which can be fired and used like a grapple, etc. The Arkham Knight secret armory, which gives his bullets acid, I believe it is, or corrosive, whatever. And Deathstroke has taken martial training, which gives him martial arts expert and ooh, something else to do with martial arts. So this is the Bane Force that will be going up against the Militia, being led by the Dark Knight Rises Bane, so anything he says will be totally incomprehensible. Uh, quick note that this list is technically illegal, because these three mercenaries that usually come with Rebirth Bane, uh, the Bane that you bring has to have the Elite Boss Mercenary rule. This Bane doesn't have that, we're just going to ignore it for the sake of having a, a different Bane lead for once. Because Rebirth Bane is very expensive. So the three usual marks, the Elite, the Dreadnought and Stealth, Bane himself, and then at the back, free agent Solomon Grundy. Objectives, loot, ammo, and ace chemicals. And in terms of additional funding gear, this Bane has absolutely nothing to do with Venom, but that's going to change because he is bringing two Venom doses. The, the assault rifle using, that's the Elite Op, I think. He has night vision goggles to allow him to see any distance, that makes him a lot more dangerous. He also has plus one magazine, and the Stealth Op has a grapple gun. So we rolled a d6 to decide the scenario, and uh, well, the first one we rolled was a 6, but there's no way we're doing that immediately again. So we're doing scenario 3 on a reroll, which is patrol, and that's the one where you get 3 victory bonus points if you have a non boss model in the enemy's deployment at the end of the game, and 1 victory point bonus for being the th first one to strike an enemy. And for the purposes of this, we're going to count strike as punch. Because there's a lot of guns in play. That's kind of like too unfair to whoever gets first activation really, assuming they can get a shot. We're just gonna, we're gonna count strike as a punch because that's a little bit harder to do. So that's what we're gonna do. We, it's the 12 inch kind of diagonals, although we've actually went with this diagonal and this diagonal, but still, here's how things are set up. Got ourselves a lamppost there. We have the riddles here in the middle of the street along with another lamp and Sir Graying. This is where Bane's deployed, basically up to the line with the enemy's medical there and tighten around the corner. Up in this watchtower we have the night vision assault rifle wielding Merc who is very dangerous with those night vision goggles, that's why they're expensive I would assume. Got a Sir Grating and a lamppost here, another Sir Grating and a lamppost over here, and then the enemy deployment. Deathstroke can deploy up to 8 inches away as long as he's 4 inches away from objective because he has undercover so he's hiding behind the assault van here. Cybernetic Brute, Lieutenant, the, the Arkham Knight, and then over here is the, the henchman with the carbine. And in terms of objectives, these chemicals are in there. In the alleyway, the loot is right there, and the ammo is down here. So that's the setup. All that remains to be seen is who's going to get first activation in battle round one. Bane face for Bane, obviously, and pink for the militia. Bane face, no space. They get first activation. So to get the game started, Bane activated for his crew. He moved up and attempted to solve the riddle that belongs to the Militia. He scored a 2, 2 minus 1. Well, it makes it the same lowest bracket result. So he actually did 1 blood damage to himself. As silly as that is. If he'd remember to use Titan, although I don't know if he can use... Uh, by which I mean Venom. I don't know if he can use Venom before the, the game starts proper because it would have ignored the first two bits of damage in a turn. Either way, it's about time that happened, honestly, because riddles... the the should be changed so they're not so close to the enemy deployment because why wouldn't you try and solve them? Well, well, anyway, he took one blood, that riddle is now solved, quote unquote, and is gone. Oh, also, both crews have five people each, so no passes until uh, people start dying. 
For the malicious first activation, the Lieutenant activated and used Follow Me to give the Cybernetic Brute plus one movement counter for when his activation rolls around. He then just kind of shimmied up behind Deathstroke over here. He is visible to the the Bane crew, the sorrowful wielding guy in the tower, but he will be imparted with pings for being hidden behind the, or semi-obscured by the truck there. He spent a special to crouch as well to make them plus one better, so hopefully if he opts to go, uh, he'll not take too much damage, let's see. Solomon Grundy activated next and left the safety of the compound that's holding some objectives there, stomped out and has moved next to Bane, just kind of aiming to gun down the street, more or less. So he's there, I've uh, got to remember he has a stupid role so he can't manipulate anything, but he can claim. But we'll, we'll see what he ends up doing. Militia Soldier 1 with his carbine rifle activated next, swung round the side of the building here and moved into base to base with one of the Ace Chemicals belonging to Bane's crew. He can only contest it, it's a uh, owner generating victory points objective so he can't gain anything from it but where he's standing he can at least contest. He also crouched behind it because he is in view of the enemy sniper. Stealth of activated next and made use of his grapple gun. He moved up to the wall here, he used the grapple gun to get into contact with the riddle, then manipulated it. He got a 3, which becomes a 2, which just means the riddle has failed and he gains no victory points, which is a good result for the militia side, but obviously that's both the riddles gone again. The cybernetic brute activated next and swung around the side of the building here as well, moving past Deathstroke and the lieutenant basically touching the loot but opted not to interact with it. He had an extra movement counter, remember, from the follow me roll, which gave him one above his cap. So he was able to move a little bit further than normal, also putting himself exposed in the middle of the street. But maybe that's exactly what he had planned. So now all that Bane... No, wait, Bane still has two crew members to go, and then I think the militia just has one. No, two as well. Deathstroke and the Arkham Knight for them, and the, uh, the sniper and the tomahawk using... Militia for Bane. So of course the elite op in the tower up here wants to go last because then he has his choice of targets. So the Dreadnought op with the Tomahawks, who is standing next to the Militia's medical, moved out and is following behind Bane. This Bane has a, a buff that he can do, and I don't know if it's once per game or just one, once per battle round called Kill Them, and it just gives everybody free attack dice. So he's kind of hanging around for that bonus should he need it. So now Deathstroke or the Arkham Knight have to do something and it might put them in the crosshairs. The Arkham Knight activated and he was hiding behind this as Vote for Harvey Dent uh, sign he came out from under it, used one movement counter to get himself all the way to the edge. There's no point in him destroying the lamp because the only gun in Bane's crew can see without the light source lighting someone up because of the night vision goggles, so... No point. He moved up to there, and despite his rate of fire dropping to one, he opted to fire his free shot, essentially, because he brought the hidden magazine. And he shot the stealth op. Deemed it to be uh, the elevation meant there was no ping, plus him being next to the light, so he's lit up like a Christmas tree. He took three blood. Totally forgot about the, the secret army of the Arkham Knight giving acid rolls, so we'll look into that and probably do a quick amendment, but definitely the three blood to get us started here. A quick addendum on the acid roll. The acid roll... Removes one attack and defense dice until the end of the round, but it's unlikely he's going to be hit by anything else, so it's fairly relevant. And also ignores the light armor rule, but he doesn't have that armor at all, so still just three damage, but just to make sure it's clear. All his shots have the acid roll as long as he's firing that rifle, incidentally, so got to remember that for later on, because it might be more relevant later in the match. So Bane's final activation about round one was the sniper in the tower, and he had his choice of targets. The Arkham Knight, the Cybernetic Brute, the Lieutenant, essentially, maybe even the Carbine Soldier down there, not sure on that line of sight, but still. Opted not to shoot at the Arkham Knight because he's an acrobat, so he gets a fairly 50-50 a chance just to dodge out of the way of bullets. He opted instead, because the Lieutenant would get a good ping roll because he crouched behind the truck there, to shoot at the Cybernetic Brute. The Cybernetic Brute, uh, he got hit by all three shots, but the, the wound rolls were minus one because he's got light armor. Oh, he should actually have two stun on top of that then, because two of the hits failed. So let me just grab one of our stun dice. That should be there as well. That's much worse. <laughs> he took one bullet that did not get blocked or anything for three blood, and two failed to get through his light armor, but just a scratch, which it's hard to remember that rule. We remembered this time though, so he is hurting. He has taken five total damage on seven endurance total. Now all that remains is for Slade to go, and then that'll be the end of Battle Round 1. So a fairly unremarkable activation for Deathstroke to end Battle Round 1. He moved up and he claimed the loot. 
he did want to do more, but got to earn some points turn one. So he stopped there, he's picked them up, he'll be on his card now from now on. So that brings us to the end of battle round one, we'll be back with the recovery and uh, end of turn recap. So at the end of battle round one, the cybernetic brute who had some leftover tokens in special was able to try to recover more than just one stun. He actually got rid of both stun that he had accumulated on him, so he's now just got his blood damage, which sadly isn't going to go away because there's no medic. Uh, there was no other stun damage to recover, no knockouts or anything like that. In terms of victory points gained, the Militia got one for Deathstroke grabbing the loot, and that is it, because the Riddles gave up no points when they were claimed by Bane's side. So we're going to jump straight ahead now to see whom is going first in Battle Round 2. It's more likely to be the Militia this time, but not guaranteed. Let's see. Oh, case in point, it's Bane that gets first activation in Battle Round 2. So to start battle round two, the militia member with uh, not the militia member, sorry, the mercenary with the assault rifle, Elite Op, he opted to fire because again he still has the choice of his targets. He shot the cybernetic brute again, and this time did staggeringly well for nine blood, making the cybernetic brute a casualty. So that's a couple of victory points there for a henchman KO plus casualty to get battle round two kicked off very well for Bane's side. Let's see how the militia react. Starting off the Militia's first activation with a correction for Battle Round 1, the Arkham Knight would not have been able to fire his rifle in Battle Round 1 because it has aim and he doesn't have the role that Green Arrow has for countering, uh, having to not move if you want to use an aim weapon. It doesn't matter though because he opted to fire with full rate of fire at the Stealth Op again, hit twice with both hits, did 6 blood damage, he only has 5 endurance, that tree is very much in the way, did, did uh, enough to kill him because of him only having 5 endurance so it's irrelevant that he did 3 blood in the first battle round and he didn't get an activation this time, turn so it didn't make a difference did catch it, sorry, didn't notice it at the time totally forgot so that also means that bullet didn't get expended so that this turn now was the Arkham Knight using up his free bullet that he bought with extra funding so everything is now cleared up henchman down for the Bane side and back over to them to see what they do next. Bane activated next and just trotted his way up the main street there. He didn't use his full movement because he wanted to be just behind that corner so that the carbine merc wouldn't be able to shoot at full ballistic if he decides, sorry wrong game, full ray of fire if he wants to actually shoot at him so that's why he pulled back ever so slightly just so he's not turned the corner there. He is heading down the street though towards Deathstroke and the Lieutenant and whomever else is down there. Let's see what happens next as we go back across to the Militia. For the Militia, the Lieutenant there activated, he came round from the swap van. He didn't have quite enough movement to make it to the sewer grating, let alone use it, so he's just moving up the street, somewhat exposing himself, unfortunately, but there was nowhere else he could really go if he's wanting to actually push towards objectives, so he didn't have much choice. There he is, back over to Bane. Dreadnought Op activated next, he's moving up behind Solomon Grundy. He opted to strike at the lamppost. That's purely because this Bane has a, a Born in the Darkness rule where he gets better defense dice. I think it's plus one to defense dice if he's in darkness. So he's just helping out his boss who's presumably going to be following on behind them when he gets his activation, which will be their next turn. Right now though, I think it's just, oh, it's either the Carbine Op or Deathstroke that has to go next. It's getting ready to kick off here as Deathstroke activated and he moved right up next to this building and that's so that the the sniper lead up up here, he can just about see him. It's questionable whether he can see enough of him, but if, even if he can see enough to justify firing at him, he's definitely getting a ping roll there. There's also still a lamp on that side, so he's trying to force Bane round there. We'll see if he takes the bait, because he has to go next, he's the last one for them. And then it's just the carbine op and we're done with battle round two. See off the final two activations of battle round two, Bane shuffled around here to be behind Solomon and his elite op. Then finally the carbine using militia member in the alley there, he shuffled slightly to arguably see just enough of Solomon to take a shot. Uh, with assault three if he moves, it's normally five. He only gets two shots in total, unfortunately. He did land three hits, but... Uh, despite needing sixes on his ping rolls, because he's huge, so it's minus two to the result, Solomon managed to ping two of them, so only one hit him for one blood and one stun. So now we're on to the recovery phase, and then the recap for the turn. So then about round two, the only person with stun damage that isn't dead is Solomon Grundy. He did not regenerate it. He's very, very tanky though, so he's not going to really be hurting off of one stun, one blood much. He has 12 endurance left. Uh, and as far as victory points gained, both sides scored two victory points for making a henchman kill, well, yeah, a casualty 
but you knock them out first so you get the points for that as well. So that's two each. So the only thing that swung it was Deathstroke still holding on to the loot for one additional victory point. There's not been any fisticuffs thrown yet so that bonus victory point for the objective and the mission has not been done. Very very likely to be done in this round though. Which again is very likely to be uh, the militia that go first this time. Not impossible that it won't be but we'll see. It is finally the militia getting first activation in Battle Round 3. Battle Round 3 started with the Arkham Knight using a special counter to activate Rapid Fire. He then shot into Solomon Grundy, who wasn't particularly obscured, although we still gave him his ping rolls because they were on sixes anyway, so... Either way, one shot missed though sadly, so he ended up doing his normal maximum damage without Rapid Fire. Did six blood to Solomon, uh, plus the one blood and one stun on him, that brings him to eight out of fourteen endurance, so he's hurting now, but... He also has the Immortal Roll, so he doesn't give up victory points for being made a casualty. He still gives up some for being knocked out should that happen, but none for a casualty. This is mostly just trying to soften him up a little bit so that he doesn't start smacking people around and just rampaging over this end of the table. Let's see how Bane responds to that. Bane's elite op activated next. He shot his last remaining magazine of bullets into the, the militia lieutenant over there, did three blood, one stun. He then used his movement to come to the edge here. He dropped down, well he he moved down with a, with a jump. He had the movement counters to, count, uh, to cover it so he didn't uh, fall. And now he's just sitting there ready to move on because that's pretty much his usefulness for the game more or less done. He did a lot of good work though. He took out the cybernetic brute, he heavily wounded the lieutenant, and he kind of forced people to move out of his way as well. So I, I think he did work. Let's go back over to the militia now and see what happens. The carbine wielding militia member went next, he shot his last remaining magazine into Solomon Grundy, rate of fire 5 because he didn't move this time, and he did a staggering 5 blood 5 stun because all the hits landed. Keep in mind Solomon Grundy's defence too, so it's hitting on 2s, wounding on 2s with 6s as pings, so... Uh, yeah, it did maximum amount of damage that would kill most people, but not Solomon Grundy, he has 7 blood damage on him, Plus the 5, that brings him to 12, the, the leftover stun is relevant. So he is knocked out, not a casualty, because he still has 2 HP left that can be finished off. However, as we were just discussing last time, if he's made a casualty, he doesn't give up points. He does give them up for being a free agent knocked out though, so that is a big boon for the militia. Dreadnought up activated next, and he has 3 movement counters, so he can clear a pretty good distance. So he moved all the way over here, over to the carbine militia member who's not as threatening anymore because he has no ammunition left. Couldn't reach him though, but is at least holding, well, they're contesting the objective together now. So next turn he's going to have to try and do something about him, assuming he's able. He can jump over or around the, the Batmobile next turn to get at him if need be. We'll see what happens though. So now it's over to the Militia again. They still have Deathstroke and the Lieutenant to go, and then Bainside just has the man himself. So a couple of activations to cover here. The Lieutenant, who is heavily wounded now, so he didn't have much he could do. He had nothing in movement anyway because he was expecting close combat. He has moved up a little bit, kind of ignoring the stuff going on on the left. Being activated, he has just stepped over Solomon's corpse and is standing where you see him there. So all that means now is the only person left to go is Deathstroke for the, the entire battle round. So for those who wanted to see the Deathstroke Bane showdown, you're getting it, but it was off to a bit of a lacklustre start. He only had three attack dice plus, well he used his, his bow staff so he gets plus one for that, for being a combo weapon and having at least two attacks in but not four. He he did okay in his hit rolls. Bane gets plus one to his defense rolls because he is in darkness right now, uh, which negated another one. And then his wound rolls was like a two, a one, and nothing on the collateral die. And he's a three plus to hit with his strength. So he wasn't able to do anything. So the next round is where this fight will kick off for real. Quickly gonna do a recap though. So come right back for that. So at the end of battle round three, Solomon Grundy has woken up because Assuming we're doing everything right here, it's impossible for him to not pass an endurance test to wake up from being knocked out. You have to roll equal to or under your endurance on two dice. He has 14 endurance, therefore it's impossible for him to fail, right? Either way, he is awake so he will be able to stand up next turn. Other than that, in terms of victory points gained, a free agent being knocked out, which he was, gave up three victory points to the militia. The militia have the loot for one victory point on Deathstroke. And uh, I think that's everything that happened. 
because everyone else is still alive and the ace chemicals in the alleyway around here is being contested by the carbine using militia members so that's not claimed by Bane. So that's as things stand. Let us go into the magic bag and see who is getting first activation in battle round four. It will be the militia. So as we begin this battle round, a little addendum about the last turn, Deathstroke did take swings at Bane, which was the first melee combat of the game. He didn't land any of his strikes though, and uh, this is the problem with the secondary objectives for the scenario being a little bit vaguely worded. It says land a strike, does that mean successfully make a hit roll, or does that successfully make, or mean successfully making a damage roll? Because he made the hit rolls, he just didn't do the damage rolls. We're going to count it that he has succeeded in doing that objective for one victory point, but it's honestly, it needs to be more clearly worded. Anyway, the Arkham Knight activated, he used his final remaining magazine and shot into Solomon Grundy on the ground to kill him. Even though it would award no victory points thanks to his mortal rule, it's just to remove a big problem from the field. So Bane activated next, and the Dark Knight Rises Bane has uh, martial arts mastery, has combo unarmed, he has, what else does he have? He has something else, hang on, where is his card? Let's see. Close Combat Master, Reinforced Gloves and Combo Unarmed, so you can put out a staggering amount of stun damage per turn. He also opted to use one of his Venom Doses this turn, which made his strength plus one. So, all said and done, he did a staggering six stun to Deathstroke. Deathstroke has two Endurance left. He tried to defend with two to maybe even do a counterattack, but didn't. So, he's hurting real bad now. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Deathstroke activated next to the Militia, but he's heavily wounded now. He opted to use his Sword just with two attacks left to try and do some bleed damage to Bane just so it would be lasting damage and he whiffed with both of, both of his hit rolls unfortunately so he opted not to move, he's staying there to see how things progress if he does get the chance to heal himself his, he can use his once per game soul armor next turn to heal some of his stun damage back but uh, might be in a spot of bother Dreadnought op activated next, he hopped around the or on top of and then down from the Batmobile, got behind the carbine using militia member Struck at him with his tomahawks that are devastating. Did two blood, two stun. He has four endurance, so he is knocked out. So as numbers get thinner on the table, we're just going to cover the last activations of the turn. The lieutenant moved down the street. In case you're wondering why he didn't go to help Deathstroke, it's because he's going for the secondary objective for the scenario of getting into the enemy deployment by the end of the game. Knowing that, most likely, the, uh, the elite op with no ammunition left is guarding the way into Bane's deployment zone. So it might be all that stands in his way of three or four victory points. So that takes us to the end of battle round four. Now it's time for recovery and recap. So at the end of battle round four, there was two victory points gained apiece. Sorry, two victory points gained in total, one apiece. Bane got one for knocking out a henchman and the militia got one for Deathstroke still barely holding on to the loot. No objectives are being claimed. So that means that uh, it's all to play for. The, the points are very close and if Deathstroke goes down that will counter Solomon Grundy being knocked out. So, let's come over here. It's even as to who's going to get the penultimate turns activation or first activation. It will be Bane. So perhaps unsurprisingly, but to start battle round 5, the penultimate turn, Bane activated and he attacked Deathstroke, did 5 stun, knocking him out. He's got no blood damage on him, so it's very possible he'll wake up, but he is down and out. That's 3 victory points for Bane's side for knocking out a free agent. Uh, worth noting, he used a second Venom dose to make it easier to happen again, so he's now out of Venom. Uh, Deathstroke had one special counter allocated to activate counterattack, and the rule for counterattack just says once activated, and it's a passive, so presumably as long as in the raise the plan you have the one special and you say that's allocated for it, it's in effect. Not that you have to do your activation first. So he struck back with his sword because he successfully blocked one of Bane's blows and did two blood to him. If you aren't, if you have to have an activation first before activating counterattack, then that obviously is not the way it goes. It's another case of the rule not being 100% clear with when it's activated. Oh, and a quick addendum: Bane did not move prior to defeating Deathstroke, just so it's because we wanted to show the epic conclusion to the battle. He finished smacking Deathstroke unconscious, and then he moved next to the Titan to claim it. And somehow knew it would all come down to this very tightly cramped alleyway. The Arkham Knight activated next, he leapt down behind the Dreadnought op and attacked him. Uh, he did purchase reinforced gloves so he would be doing two stun per successful punch. He rolled very badly and didn't do any damage at all. 
which is a massive blow to the militia's hopes and dreams down here. The Dreadnought Op activated and retaliated against the Arkham Knight, dealing two blood and two stun. Opted not to move because the body is in the way there, so he can't get to these chemicals. He's just staying there and taking on the Arkham Knight and doing a pretty good job of it, as it turns out. So to finish off the last two activations about round five, the Lieutenant activated, moved down and struck out with his electric baton at the Elite Op and did nothing. The Elite Op then returned the favour by activating in his turn. And he's just using his fists because he has no close range weapon. He just did one bit of damage, so that's one stun, and takes three, three blood, one stun, sitting on the Lieutenant, and with six endurance left. It's another damage counter lost, or another counter lost, rather. But that's it for the turn. Did forget to mention, obviously, when Slade got knocked out, he dropped the loot, but we'll cover that properly in the recap. So at the end of battle round five, Bane's team scored three victory points for knocking out a free agent, two victory points for claiming the ace chemicals, and one, yeah, one victory point for knocking out a henchman. The carbine op is still alive. He did not wake up also, so he's done for the rest of the game. Deathstroke did wake up, so he might be able to do something. He's just knocked down rather than knocked out now in the, the final battle round. The Lieutenant also recovered one stun. The Arkham Knight did not recover anything. We also know for a fact that the Militia are getting first turn in the final battle round, because they're the only counter left in the bag. There it is, just for proof. So, let's move into the final turn. First activation for the Militia in the final turn was the Lieutenant, who swung his electrical baton at the uh, the Elite Op, did four stun to him. He did try to block with two, so that's reduced him down to one attack remaining. He then moved into both the enemy's deployment zone and in base to base with the medical supplies. So in this mess of an alleyway, the Tomahawk Merc activated. He struck out the Arkham Knight. His Tomahawks are devastating as well, so it's pretty hard to dodge against them. The Arkham Knight got real lucky though. Only took one stun and that was from the bonus collateral die. So it doesn't look like he's going to be taken down before the end of the game, which is lucky for him. The Arkham Knight activated his final activation. He knew he didn't do enough or couldn't literally possibly do enough damage to take out the Tomahawk Merc because he's got seven endurance and hasn't been wounded. So he shuffled to the side and threw his one, I think it's called an electrostatic grenade at Bane. I've got the template here. You can throw a grenade anywhere. Basically, it's just covering alongside of Deathstroke but not actually touching him. This is, it only did one stun to Bane, which is nothing, but more importantly, it gives him the blind effect, so he can't land hits on anything other than a six. So this is giving Deathstroke a chance. So just gonna wrap up the final activations of the game here. I think the order in which they were played was important here. So it was up to Bane's activation. He activated the uh, Dreadnought, no, Elite Op, who moved in just to contest the medical. Attacked with his one attack against the Lieutenant, didn't do anything, didn't matter really. So he is contesting, so the medical isn't going to give any victory points at least. Then Deathstroke activated, he stood up, he picked the loot back up, and then he moved in to contest the ace chemicals that Bane was holding, but stayed away from him, so he'd have to walk in. Keep in mind, this is all supposed to be covered in smoke as well. So Bane, it's only worth one extra victory point if he was to kill Deathstroke, but he only does stun damage, so therefore he can't. You can do a coup de grad to get one blood, but he has no blood on him, so it would be pointless. So this is kind of like the downside of this Bane, I guess. So instead, he just moved away and claimed the other these chemicals. And he is claiming it because the Carbine Militia member is unconscious. So that's going to take us to the end of the game. Time for the final recap. So to wrap up the end of the game here in terms of victory points scored, the Militia got the three bonus victory points for having a crew member in the enemy's deployment as long as it's not the boss and not someone who's knocked out. And they had the loot. The Bane crew got two for holding the Ace Chemicals again. So in terms of final score, that takes us to 10 victory points for Bane and 13 victory points for the Militia. If the Militia didn't get these bonus points down here, it would have been a, a draw. If the Arkham Knight hadn't thought to block the Dreadnought Op from just going around the corner into their deployment, it would have been a draw. Uh, keep in mind, the Dreadnought Op activated before the Arkham Knight, so it's not like he could have just walked around at the end of his activation. There wasn't enough room. He isn't an acrobat, so he couldn't do that, whereas Arkham Knight is an acrobat. That Bane is a powerhouse once he gets into close combat. He's not any good at finishing people off, but he can do a staggering amount of uh, stun damage. Very dangerous. We'll be seeing him again on the table in the future as well. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much for doing so. Come back in the future for more Batman miniature game battle reports. Ta-ta for now.